I just realized it's 4.01. So if everyone can take a seat. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to see everyone here. This is a joyous and a momentous event. I'm Noma Anderson, Dean of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and I am so pleased to welcome you to one of the most revered traditions at the University of Vermont, and that is an endowed faculty investiture ceremony. I'm excited and I'm honored. Hold on one second, the pages are sticking. Today, we have the pleasure of recognizing and celebrating two outstanding members of our nursing faculty, Dr. Jennifer Laurent, as the inaugural holder of the Holly D. and Robert E. Miller Green and Gold Professorship in Nursing Research, and Dr. Mary Val Palumo as the inaugural holder of the Holly D. and Robert E. Miller Green and Gold Professorship in Nursing Workforce Research. These two endowed faculty positions that are inaugurating today are a part of the latest expression of Bob and Holly Miller's remarkable generosity and exceptional commitment to improving the healthcare experience for patients and their families and to supporting education and research and the clinical missions of the UVM College of Nursing and Health Sciences, the UVM Lawner College of Medicine and the UVM Medical Center. We are privileged to have a number of special guests joining us today to mark this occasion, including UVM Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Patrick Prelock, who you will hear from very shortly, Tim Miller, son of Holly and Robert Miller, and his daughter, Sarah Owen, who is a graduate of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences and when I asked her about that, she let me know she was a two-time graduate of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. She is a DNP who educates our students. Thank you so much, Sarah and Tim, for being here. We are also very pleased to welcome Dr. Sunny Epen, who is CEO of our UVM Health Network. Uh, I want to use the average adjective new CEO beginning uh, November 29th. Welcome, Sunny. It means a lot that you're here. And I also would like to welcome the president and COO, Steve Leffler of UVM Medical Center, and Dr. Rick Page, Dean of the Lana College of Medicine. You three gentlemen are such supporters of our college that it's wonderful that you're here for this very, very important event. Because we're gathered here to talk about the generosity of Holly and Bob Miller. Bob passed away in February, 2020, but Holly is still bringing light to her family. Through their energy, their leadership, their philanthropic investments, the Millers have helped transform the landscape of healthcare and health sciences education at the University of Vermont and UVM Medical Center. Without question, they are building one of the most impactful philanthropic legacies ever felt in this community. A physical expression of that transformative legacy can be seen around the corner. The amazing Robert E. and Holly D. Miller building at the Medical Center. 
Uh, we took a tour of that a couple of days ago, a week ago, and it's just remarkable. Thank you for that. Patients and families are just uh, cared for in a beautiful setting, and you can imagine how much that means. Holly has long been a leading advocate in the areas of nursing and end-of-life care. Among others, she's worked tirelessly to advance these causes with many local and regional organizations. The College of Nursing and Health Sciences Advisory Board, the Vermont Palliative Care Collaborative, the Mason Dean Initiative to advance public understanding of end of health, end of life care. The Vermont Respite House, the Visiting Nurses Association of Chittenden and Grand Isle Counties, the UVM Medical Center Foundation, and Champlain College have all benefited from Holly's expertise, her skill, her desire to make a difference. Bob Miller played a crucial role in the economic health of our region for decades as founder and owner of REM Development, Northern Vermont's largest developer and lesser of commercial real estate. His entrepreneurial spirit, determined work ethic, and can-do attitude helped provide over 2 million square feet of energy-efficient distribution centers manufacturing sites, warehouses, and flex space to the businesses that employ our family members, our friends, and our neighbors. In addition, he served as director at the Lake Champlain Regional Chamber of Commerce and chair of the airport commission at Burlington International Airport. The Miller's philanthropy and vision have also benefited many other Vermont organizations such as Visiting Nurse Association of Chittenden and Grand Isle Counties, the Boys and Girls Club, the Flynn Theater, the King Street Center, Champlain College, and the Vermont Women's Fund. I know that Professor Laurent and Professor Palumbo are poised to carry on their work in the spirit of the Millers with dedication and passion. Now I would like to pause and take a moment to acknowledge the work of the University of Vermont Foundation in helping the Millers achieve their goal of supporting the education, research, and clinical missions of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, the College of Medicine, and UVM Medical Center. Thank you, Ginger, and all of your team. It's been tremendous working with you all. Significantly, since the foundation's founding in 2011, it has helped donors establish dozens of endowed faculty positions at UVM. Today, the university boasts over 120 endowed chairs and professors, and we are extremely proud to welcome our two professors today to that esteemed group. So once again, on behalf of the college, of nursing and health sciences and the entire University of Vermont, we are tremendously grateful to Holly and Bob Miller for this gift. At this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Patty Prelock, to offer her thoughts on this investiture. Please join me in welcoming her. Good afternoon and thank you so much, Dean Anderson. And thanks for all of you for being here today to support two outstanding faculty members and to celebrate the vision of Holly and Bob Miller. And it's a special privilege for me to be able to honor both Mary Val and Jennifer because I've known them for a while. And before I'm being provost, as you know, I had the privilege of being Dean in the College of Nursing Health Sciences. And I think I hired Jennifer, if I remember right, right? Score. <laughs> the Millers have left an enduring legacy for the College of Nursing and Health Sciences and Holly for her vision for a better way to care for patients throughout their illness and at the end of their life, and for Bobby's commitment to providing the funding to realize Holly's vision. 
They have been one of my favorite power couples um, who started from humble beginnings and have given back so much of what they've earned. They represent philanthropy in its truest sense, giving back and paying it forward. As philanthropists, they truly made a difference, not only for the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, but as Dean Anderson said, for the entire Vermont community. It has been a privilege to know them and learn from them. As UVM's Provost and Senior Vice President, it is my great privilege to take part in this honored tradition that Dean Anderson talked about and to recognize Professor Laurent and Professor Palumbo for their exceptional service and leadership and scholarship that they've brought to our institution and to our community. UVM's land grant mission, as you know, has at its core a social contract. And the College of Nursing and Health Sciences investment in the health and well being of our community is one of the most important and visible ways in which UVM fills that contract and really advances its mission of service. Outstanding faculty members like Professors Palumbo and Laurent are absolutely vital to this work, which is why this gift and these investitures are so very important to us. Appointment as an endowed position is, as Dean Anderson said, among the highest academic honors the University of Vermont can bestow upon a faculty member. Endowed chairs and professorships allow the university to both recognize and celebrate academic achievement, as well as to continue to invest in scholarly and service excellence in our faculty. Endowed faculty positions are also a tribute to the holders and permanent legacies for the donors who established them. Named chairs and professorships help us really ensure the quality and strength of our faculty for years to come and permanently reflect the interest and hopes of the donors who establish and support them. They also are important in recruiting and retaining the most creative researchers, the most effective teachers, the best clinicians, exceptional faculty members like Jennifer and Mary Val, in turn create a dynamic and engaging academic environment that really attracts outstanding students. Across the university, in every college and every department, our faculty, staff, and students are really pursuing innovative research that supports healthy societies and healthy environment. And these are key components of our amplifying our impact strategic vision that really guides our work by weaving together three key components. And that is ensuring student success, investing in our university's distinctive research interests and strengths um, around a healthy environment and healthy societies and fulfilling the university's land grant mission. As provost, I can assure you I will do everything I can to increase support for leaders like Professors Palumbo and Laurent for the College of Nursing and Health Sciences and for every facet of research and care at this remarkable university. Jennifer and Mary Val, I am so happy to welcome you to our growing ranks of endowed professors and chairs. I look forward to celebrating your continued success for years to come. Congratulations again. I'm so proud of both of you. It's now my great pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend and leader in nursing, Dr. Rosemary Dale, chair of the Department of Nursing and the holder of the Holly and Bob Miller Professorship in Nursing Leadership. Dr. Dale's going to share a little more about these two incredible professors that we're recognizing today. Thank you, Provost Prelock. It's a pleasure to be here today and to have the honor and the responsibility to speak about two good friends and valued colleagues, Dr. Jennifer Laurent and Dr. Mary Val Palumbo. To the Miller family first, thank you for your generosity and for supporting these professorships. Let me speak first about Mary Val Palumbo. Mary Val is the consummate entrepreneur. I have seldom met anyone who is more creative and more nimble in responding to the healthcare needs of the time and reinventing herself to meet those needs. Mary Val began her career with a bachelor's degree in physical education. 
she found her way to the discipline of nursing in the early 80s and completed one of the first direct entry programs for individuals with bachelor's degrees in another field who ultimately chose a career in nursing, found their way. In 1985, she graduated from the Massachusetts General Hospital Institute of Health Professions with a master's degree in nursing, magna cum laude, followed by a doctoral, doctoral degree in nursing from Rush University. Mary Val met her husband, David, leading canoe trips for Outward Bound. Struck by the charm of Vermont, they bought 120 acres in the Hyde Park area in 1985 and built their off-the-grid home. I recall my first trip to their house. It was a very hot day, and I was a city girl. I could not understand how batteries provided all the power, and those batteries were charged by a waterfall in their backyard. They were way ahead of their time. Their son, Forrest, arrived in their new home, followed by Kia in 1988 and Coretta in 1989. Their five grandchildren have now rounded out the number to nine, a good softball team with an umpire. Mary Val joined the nursing faculty in 1987 as a part-time lecturer. She has progressed through tenure in 2012 and achieved the rank of full professor in 2017. Mary Val wears many hats. She is a teacher, the director of the Nursing Workforce Initiative in the state, and the director of interprofessional education in the college. As the director of Nursing Workforce Initiative, Dr. Palombo began in the 80s to collect data and make predictions for the nursing needs in the state of Vermont. Through her advocacy, and I must say tenacity, the state of Vermont implemented a bi-yearly mandatory census of Vermont nurses tied to license renewal. This information is used today for nursing workforce planning. As the director of interprofessional education, she has creatively and enthusiastically used avatars, role-playing, innovation, and energy to help the next generation of healthcare providers to make our care better by understanding what each of us brings to the care team and continuously providing improvements. Additionally, Dr. Palumbo has written and spoken extensively on the topic of workforce and innovation in workforce. She has over 50 publications noted. 34 of those publications are related to nursing workforce. Mary Val loves elders. Her professional career has been in the service of elders. Her teaching career has been devoted to bringing her personal enthusiasm and knowledge to students, always with an emphasis on the elders, their challenges, their gifts, and the role the nurse can play with this group of citizens. Her recent sabbatical allowed her to look at the New Zealand system of diagnosing and caring for individuals who have dementia, the next major challenge that faces us as nurses, sons, daughters, and individuals. My sincere congratulations to a good friend, a good scholar, and a kind person. Thank you, Rosemary. We will now present Professor Colombo, Colombo, I knew I was gonna say that, Colombo. <laughs> with a medallion that marks this occasion and signifies her status as the holder of an endowed faculty position. We hope that she will wear this medallion with her academic regalia at commencement and other official university functions. Thank you for joining us at the podium. And it is my pleasure. Thank you. Well, thanks. It's kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> we'll go with it, right? Thank you so much for this incredible honor and recognition of my work. The Miller family's generosity has made a lasting impact on healthcare in Vermont. 
we are all touched in some ways by their vision, their kindness, big heartedness, and gifts to this community. Thank you. In December of 2001, Dr. Betty Ramber, who was the Dean of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, took a chance and hired me to create an Office of Nursing Workforce that was funded by the Vermont Agency of Human Services and the uh, UVM College of Medicine Office of Primary Care. In my interview, Betty asked me, what do you do with a blank piece of paper? I can't remember what I replied, but uh, it was enough to get me the job. I never really had a blank piece of paper that wasn't Im immediately filled with projects, research, collaborations, and personal growth. With Betty as my mentor, an ambitious plan to address the 2001 nursing shortage was launched. Among the projects were outreach to middle schoolers about careers in nursing, older nurse retention tips to all of Vermont hospitals, older nurse career pathways to boost the workforce until the new nurses arrived, uh, nurse health and safety perceptions in relation to their intention to leave, and training in emergency preparedness and mass vaccination clinics, that was for anthrax, uh, staffed by retired nurses and establishment of ongoing assessment of demand and supply of every sector of the nursing workforce. At the time, one troubling issue was the capacity of Vermont schools of nursing to grow to meet these emergent needs. In 2009, with the nursing shortage easing as a national recession increased interest in the reliable reliability of nursing careers, pro, particularly as a second uh, career and opportunities for part-timers to pick up more hours and supplement sagging family incomes. Into the next decade, Vermont nursing schools have more than doubled in their capacity and remain full. At, this, uh, at that time, new nurses faced slimmer job prospects than were imagined when they started their education. Vermont nurses were becoming more educated and employed in settings outside the hospital. Recommendations of the Vermont Blue Ribbon Commission of Nursing in 2010 were being implemented and attention paid to educational loan repayment and uh, health care um, uh, healthcare career promotion, and this was uh, led by my colleagues at AHEC, uh, Dr. Mimi Reardon, um, Charles uh, McLean, and Executive Director Liz Cody, who also paid attention to uh, nursing graduate internships, and this is a lasting impact of the work of Susan Boyer and VNIP. Um, increasing faculty salaries and loan repayment and a continued push for better representatives, uh, representation of males in nursing and BIPOC nursing students uh, from entry level to doctoral um, levels, uh, and these all had success. Vermont's nursing programs continue to expand with new sites for licensed practical nurses thanks to uh, Vermont uh, Tech and opportunities for nurses to continue their education uh, to earn bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees all in Vermont. But the good ship lollipop didn't last so long because the hidden iceberg of the aging baby boomers and their massive health needs threatened to sink the progress to date, not to mention COVID. This is apparent to many making long-term healthcare workforce projections, including my colleagues at the National Forum of Nursing Workforce Centers. The canary in the coal mine has always been our long-term care settings, including nursing homes, uh, home health agencies, adult day programs, and other residential care settings. Of course, these settings are where COVID hit first and hard and if not for the courage and the commitment of our nurses, uh, including many LPNs and nursing assistants, the toll on Vermonters would have been much worse. It also uh, appears that COVID caused a taking stock by hospital nurses of their willingness to put themselves and their families at risk for less salary than their colleagues who chose to travel. 
Once again, we're being called to act uh, to shore up our nursing workforce. However, it's possible to learn from prior lessons. Nursing programs faculty and faculty must receive the support necessary to produce nurses for Vermont. Nursing graduates must not be saddled with debt and should receive adequate support on the job in their novice years. A pipeline must exist for high school students who are interested and those interested in second or third careers and new Americans, as well as those from underrepresented groups. Nurses must feel respected in the workplace with adequate salaries and interprofessional collaborations for the best quality of health care. Finally, the nurse of the future must be separated from the room rate in many of our institutions with new payment models that compensate the vital work of today and tomorrow's nurse. It's been my honor and privilege to be a nurse, being present at vulnerable times for my patients, their families and caregivers, as well as the nursing community. Thank you to the Millers for recognizing my contributions to this important work. I also want to thank all my colleagues at the Department of Nursing, and lastly, to my husband and my family for being so supportive of the career path I chose to follow. Thank you, Mary Bell. Moving on. Dr. Jennifer Laurent. Dr. Laurent found her way to Vermont with a fresh new degree in nursing from the University of Connecticut. One of the first new graduates to seek and receive a position in the ICU, Dr. Laurent was a trendsetter from the start of her nursing career. Her clinical skills, consummate organizational skills, and her attitude made her the perfect candidate to establish and coordinate the first pediatric transport team at the medical center. It was in this pediatric acute care environment that she met and married Dr. Barry Heath, professor of pediatrics and pediatric intensivist. Dr. Laurent is constantly in search of new knowledge and a new challenge. She found that in a master's degree from the University of Massachusetts and ultimately a doctorate from Duquesne. With these two degrees, she, had she earned credentials as a family nurse practitioner and the skills of a researcher. Jennifer joined the UVM faculty in 2001 as a volunteer adjunct faculty. In 2011, she joined the full-time faculty and since that time, she has made steady academic progress and currently serves as professor with tenure and vice chair for graduate studies. Dr. Laurent is an outstanding teacher. She was nominated for the Krebs Maurice Excellence in Teaching Award. She is constantly identified by students and fellow faculty as the benchmark for excellence in the classroom and in remote teaching. Dr. Laurent's research program focuses on childhood obesity, which she has explored through a neuroscience lens. She has formulated research liaisons throughout the University of Vermont, the country, and internationally. Her work has been published in the most prestigious journals in the field. One of the recent publications, Brain Function in the Pre-Adolescent Brain, results from the ABCD study were published in Nature Neuroscience this year. Dr. Laurent's article, Associations Among Body Mass Index, Cortical Thickness, and Executive Functions in Children, published in JAMA Pediatrics, is a benchmark article that has drawn significant attention and merited an editorial in JAMA Pediatrics issue. Dr. Laurent is a member of the faculty practice at Apple Tree Bay, where she teaches and cares for primary care patients. She is an unusual faculty member who is able to maintain a rigorous program of research, 
cultivate an interest and skill in golf, as well as achieve excellence in teaching while maintaining a regular clinical practice. At this time, when the discipline of nursing and the Department of Nursing is striving to increase scholarly effort, she will be a standard bearer at UVM. Dr. Laurent has demonstrated what is frequently deemed an impossible goal in academia. She has hit the trifecta with excellence in practice, scholarship, and teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. We will now present Professor Laurent with a medallion that marks this occasion and signifies her status as the holder of an endowed faculty position. We hope, Jennifer, that you will wear this medallion with your academic regalia at commencement and other official university functions. Here you are. Do I get a chance to bite this? <laughs> I do? It, I don't think it's full. Um, wow, I guess is all I have to say. I just um, really don't believe that's me, but moving forward. So good afternoon. Um, thank you all for taking time out of your day, especially my faculty. I'm not my, I, yeah, my faculty, my friends, my colleagues who really make this very much possible. So thank you. I realize that you're thinking about your grades and your finals right now. But And I promise that I'm going to be brief, too. Um, I also would like to thank um, Mrs. and Mr. Holly and Bob Miller and their family. Thank you both. And thank you for being here as well. I'm truly honored to be the recipient of the Holly D. and Robert E. Miller Green and Gold Professor in Nursing Research. Also, my sincere thank you to Provost Prelock and to my dean, Anderson, oh, right next to her. <laughs> Um, and a special thank you to my chair, Dr. Rosemary Dale, um, for her ongoing and unrelenting support, um, even when it sometimes wasn't welcome. <laughs> but that's what you, that's what you want. Um, she, she's been an amazing mentor, colleague, and friend, and I thank you beyond measure. As many of you uh, know now, um, or have heard, uh, my research focuses on the mechanisms contributing to obesity in youth, both from a brain, but also a behavioral aspect. And I'm hopeful that the product of my research since my time here at UVM has resulted in a greater understanding of how our brains can be shaped by the foods that we eat, and as such, result in some ob obesogenic behaviors that may be beyond one's um, cognitive control. Most importantly, I hope that some of my work helps dispel the perpetual myth that obesity is just a matter of willpower. Like if that's one thing that my work does, that's the most important to me. That it's not about merely eating less and moving more to control obesity and the obesity ep epidemic. Inherent in my research is collaboration. And I work with many, many very intelligent, uh, driven, high-performing individuals and researchers. But I do still remember the distinct feeling of complete inadequacy as a new tenure line faculty. I was only here for about a year when I cold emailed out of desperation an internationally recognized researcher and ended up meeting with him that week, which is shocking to me. Still, it's shocking. And I discussed a study that I was considering that was in line with some of his work. So I'm thinking this would be great. This is a great opportunity for when I settle in to um, my tenure position, so to speak, to have a great collaboration. As an aside, I find it completely amazing and, and like naive that I actually thought you got to settle in as a pre-tenure faculty, like seriously to this day. Um, regardless, um, after our discussion, he said, let's do it. And I said, now you mean? 
like now? And he said, yeah, why not? And I couldn't come up with a good reason to not pursue this. And there was an internal grant that was due. And um, I had to either go for it or not. So I had to either choose the opportunity to work with this incredibly reputable researcher or lose the chance. So my inside voice is saying to me at that point, what are you thinking? You aren't ready. And how in the world are you going to actually do this? So I took a big, deep breath. I put on my big girl boots and I went for it feelings of inadequacy or not. And I built that team. I built that research team and I completed two studies with that research team. And I was the first nurse practitioner that had a PI status in the clinical research center, something in which I'm very um, proud of. So I owe him a lot for that. And he pushed me off that proverbial cliff that we talk about it. And I mean, literally and metaphorically. So now as I reflect, Several of my greatest successes have come from opportunities that have pushed me beyond my comfort zone by those who saw in me something that I might not have seen. So fast forward 11 years, here I am. Um, and I'm still more than a little surprised to receive such a prestigious recognition and honor. And so I guess if I had to provide some, sorts of, some sort of words of wisdom that apparently these types of events seem to afford, I would say, put on your big person boots and go for it. And I speak this especially to my friends, family, and colleagues who identify as female and might also share some of those similar inner voices and um, might have that little imposter speaking in the back of their brain. So the limits that you perceive are only your own. And to quote Eleanor Roosevelt, we must do that which we think we cannot. So in closing, I would like to thank those who have provided the greatest investment in my lifetime and those who are all attending remotely. My mother, Barbara, and her husband, David. My father, Louis, and his wife, Barbara. My husband, Barry Heath. My niece and my nephew, Ariana and Brian. And all my family who have given me a lifetime of love and support while instilling in me the need for lifelong learning, advocacy, determination, and an amazing work ethic. And again, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here to celebrate with me. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Mary Val. While we are here to honor your research accomplishments. Hearing from you, we see what role models you are for your students and for your colleagues. And we thank you for that too. Well, at UVM, it is customary for the newly invested faculty members to present the donors, all whose generosity has brought us here today with their own copy of the Investiture Medallion. So Mary Val and Jennifer, will you join me? Tim and Sarah, would you join us too, please? Today's investitures and all they stand for would not be possible without your family support. Thanks to you, UVM will always have world-class specialists committed to providing the highest quality patient care. So the three of us would like to present you with your own medallion and to thank you so much for what you have done for all of us. Thank you. That was this one is for you, and this one is for you. Well, good afternoon. As four mentioned, my name's Tim Miller. Um, thank you, and it's an honor to represent my family in this ceremony. Jennifer and Mary Val, it is clear that your dedication to nursing and years of expertise 
have brought you here today. Well deserving of the professorships you now hold, congratulations. I know it would make my father and Holly very pleased that their vision is being, being carried forward by you both. My father and Holly had a tremendous impact on our community and cared deeply for the health and well being of its people. Dad and Holly recognized the key role health care providers play in the health and well being of our community and were compelled to support that in a myriad of ways, including their early years as philanthropists supporting the now UVM Children's Hospital through the Children's Miracle Network to more recently a focus on palliative care and updated state-of-the-art facility for patients and their families at the UVM Medical Center. And finally, why we are gathered here today to support and so celebrate nurses in the critical role they have in healthcare that includes education, research, and clinical care. I am very proud that my own daughter, Sarah, here today is a graduate of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences and an outstanding, well-educated nurse. I am gonna say one thing I can speak firsthand about the level of excellent care provided by the nurses at the medical center as in the past 14 months, I have spent quite some time here. Thank you, nurses, and thank you, team. Thank you. As we end our program, I would like to thank the speakers who have joined me this afternoon and say again how deeply grateful we are to Holly and Bob Miller for creating these permanently endowed professorships and how grateful we are to Professor Laurent and Professor Palumbo for their dedication and to improving the health of our community and elevating the statue of our college. We all take pride every day in the important research, teaching, and service that our faculty members carry out in the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. So much of the work they do is enriched by the support of our donors, including many people who are here with us today. As Dean, I can't tell you just how much it means to me to have your support for this special college, its faculty and its students. We are grateful to all of you for attending this rare double investiture to honor Dr. Laurent and Dr. Palumbo and to give thanks to the Millers for their far-sighted and generous philanthropy. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our formal program but please stay and join us for refreshments. Uh, take care, travel safely, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>